Hello, welcome to the Economic Circle. This is Dr. Alex Mosley. In this tutorial, the first tutorial on money and its growth, we're going to have a look at where money comes from. And first of all, we have to acknowledge that money was never invented. A lot of people don't understand this. They assume a pharaoh or a king was needed. But money is the product of an unintended system called the market system. Traders want to converge onto things which will reduce the costs of trade and they will do this by themselves. They don't need anybody to tell them what to do. And they will converge onto what we call monetary media. So, it doesn't require a king or a pharaoh to come up with the idea. And that principle does not disappear just because states, countries, nation states are currently in charge of our money. Ultimately, they are not. When governments or states mismanage money, the market evolves new ways of exchanging goods and services because that's what the market's about. It's about the transaction between traders, between exchanging goods for services or services for goods or services for services, goods for goods, etc. And money is just the medium in between. That's all it is. Now, the emergence of money. Let's go right back to deep history. Humanity is archaeologists argue over this, 150,000 years old or more in our current genetic form. Our earliest ancestors worked with stone and wood and they gradually improved their skills to farm the land. But what is also pertinent about us as a species is that we could see beyond the immediate moment. We could plan ahead and adjust our actions according to what we wanted in the future. Our species, paleontologists tell us, survived because of its ability to imagine and to look ahead. Now, trade and exchange developed from this ability. Animals don't exchange. There's one or two experiments where monkeys in cages will exchange things, um, little coins for food or for sex. It's quite a funny one, that one. But really, they don't engage in complicated trading systems across tribal systems. Now, perhaps our Neanderthal cousins didn't either. They, they died out about ten to 12,000 years ago, and there's no evidence as yet, new evidence is always forthcoming from archaeologists, that they didn't trade, that, that they traded, right? But a human travelling into new lands would often carry with him or her tools, right? You'd carry your tools with you. Now, some of these tools could be gifts for whomever they encountered on the way. Now, such gifts in themselves become exchangeable, and archaeologists find artefacts that have travelled great distances across the ancient world, indicating the emergence of complex exchange systems. Wow! Now, exchange systems become trade systems, whether they're based initially on gift-giving or ritualistic offerings. So, what we see here is, let me just jump to the artefacts page, these sort of things could be used not just for giving, saying, hey, look at this cool stone I've found, but also as a form of money, as a medium of exchange. In the absence of any chief, traders quickly realised that some commodities were more readily acceptable than others. These commodities could then be used to express wealth and prestige by the chiefs and as a means of connecting groups over long distances for the diplomats, as it were, or the priests who moved between societies. More importantly, though, traders would carry such items that held value for different communities as a means for exchanging goods for goods or services for services. So these items, these beautiful stone items, could therefore become the first money. Money emerged. It wasn't invented. The driving force behind the convergence onto monetary media was, and always is, the actions of traders. The sheer volume of transactions will quickly overwhelm ritualistic and political exchanges, as it still does. Right? Markets mean money. Wherever there are markets, money will evolve or emerge. When inter-societal and intra-societal trades become more regular, the convergence principle gains momentum. And traders, remember, always have an incentive to reduce the cost of trade. They will therefore converge onto exchange products that are useful for trading purposes more than they are useful for consumption or for production purposes, like the stones we saw. Not very good to consume, can't do much with them. Not very good for production, they're not hand axes, etc. 
but they would be used for exchange purposes. These were the original monetary commodities. As societies' trading patterns merged across societies, across tribal groups, we see another convergence onto metal monetary media, especially gold and silver units with copper or brass for smaller units. Now, knowing how money emerges is critical for any economist, historian or politician or paleontologist to understand. Money emerges through the invisible hand process that Adam Smith popularised for market production. Now, in the second video on money, we'll be looking at the reasons why banking emerged. OK, thanks for listening, guys, and see you in the next unit. Bye now.